The past few years have seen an increased adoption of digital technologies, which has only been further accelerated by the pandemic. Our business renewal survey revealed that 92% of respondents in APEC are re-evaluating their digital strategies and optimizing digital infrastructure to remain competitive in response to the global pandemic. Technology companies have benefited greatly from the fruits of their investments, while many others are exploring how technology can be applied to improve their businesses and products. The transformative nature of technological change to the internal and external business environments means that companies facing digital transformation are confronted issues that may be novel to them. Whether you are a technology company, a company adopting technology, an investor or potential investor in technology, you want advisors that understand the industry and the unique issues that technology brings. Whether that means you're starting on your journey and building up a data protection program, hiring new employees, securing intellectual property for your development, or closing a deal to acquire or invest in a technology company, our industry experts are here to help you. From a corporate perspective, it is important to consider exit strategies at the beginning and to focus on preparing the company in a way that facilitates opportunities for future funding or exit. It starts with putting in place at formation a shared capital structure that is easy to understand, both from employee retention and investor appeal perspective. For example, generally staking with ordinary shares for founders. As the company starts to expand overseas, there may be foreign investment restrictions to consider. For example, in certain jurisdictions where nominee arrangements are prohibited, the company will need to seek out and implement a genuine commercial arrangement with a local partner and ensure that appropriate documentation is put in place to support such an arrangement. For this purpose, you will want the counsel of seasoned local practitioners who are international in perspective, as you will want to prep the company for its next several phases of growth, but yet are on the ground and familiar with the local regime to guide you through these arrangements. Lastly, a note on trend. ESG factors are starting to feature more in M&A activity, and these principles are now generally baked into investment policies and strategies. Being aware of this driver and making sure that your business practices will be ESG accretive to an investor coming in rather than ESG dilutive will help drive better deal outcomes. Companies at different stages of growth have different needs. Early stage startups may be seeking product market fit, iterating on their business models. Startups should therefore spend wisely on regulatory guidance on what's important to the strategic value of the business at that point. Startups in regulated sectors may need regulatory advice to figure out their business model. Whether or not a license is required can determine how a startup conducts its business. As a company expands, it often discovers complexity in managing regulations across borders. Due to the accessibility of digital products, online companies can discover that customers suddenly come from jurisdictions that did not initially expect. After all, Regulations are local, businesses are not. Our wide network of lawyers allows us to provide international support with local knowledge, helping you to understand the regulatory landscape of new markets you're entering into, whether it be data, licensing or marketing issues. Mature companies, however, require comprehensive and effective compliance programs. They may have a sizable impact on market and its norms, and may be looking to develop policy and thought leadership for the industry at this stage in new and emerging areas. From an employment perspective, even at the early stage, it will be very important to put in place all the relevant employment documentation, especially for key personnel. It is important that all employees' terms and conditions are set out clearly in order to ensure maximum protection for the startup. Critical terms, such as allocation of employee-created intellectual property rights, Safeguarding of confidential information and protection of trade secrets must be set out clearly. This step tends to be overlooked as a result of the frantic initial phase where growth is the main concern, but it's vital to get the step right in order to avoid any problems in the future. As you expand, your employment needs will become greater. In our experience, this is the stage whereby companies will consider implementing alternative remuneration methods, such as employee stock option schemes in order to further incentivize employees. In addition, as the companies become larger, 
and the internal employee structure becomes increasingly more complex. Companies will also need to consider implementing additional HR-related policies to manage the growing employee population. This could include, but are not limited to, setting up a grievance reporting channel and implementing a disciplinary policy. Companies will need to hire and set up a capable HR team to manage these issues. As companies mature, so will their HR policies and management of HR issues as well. As it is no longer a startup where HR issues were dealt with in an informal manner, HR issues must be dealt with professionally, reflecting the importance of the contributions made by the human capital to the success of the company. Accordingly, this will lead to the company requiring more sophisticated support to deal with these HR issues. From an IP perspective, companies will often face varying challenges at different stages of their life cycle. For instance, early stage startups will typically need to balance very limited resources, including manpower, time, and funds between innovating, growing its business, and pursuing IP protection. Based on our experiences advising early stage startups, there does not need to be such trade-offs. For example, provided appropriately formulated strategies, actions, and in some cases, inactions are in place, there are ways to defer costs and actions to a later time, such as when more resources become available. As companies grow from its early stages to expansion and through to maturity, another aspect of IP becomes increasingly important, which is to ensure your commercial implementations, including your products and services, do not violate the rights of others. In this regard, the approach generally shifts towards a parallel approach of one, ensuring your competitive advantages are appropriately protected by way of one or more forms of IP, such as patents, and two, identifying and assessing risks of infringing third-party IP. Based on our experiences, especially in view of the recent COVID pandemic, as such IP issues are increasingly occurring as a result of a company's digital transformation goals, including new innovations in software-related inventions, blockchain, artificial intelligence, and other highly complex technologies. The success of a company in navigating such IP issues will require IP advisors who not only know the law, but are also capable of understanding and advising on such highly complex technologies, and no other firm is better positioned to do so than Baker McKenzie. For further details, you can scan the QR codes on the screen to access our dedicated digital transformation website, and also to listen to our global TMT Talk podcast series.